we use the full stock. So if you lose one bristle off the stock, everything stays in, intact. But if you lose one bristle and it's just bristles, the one It'll next fall to it apart. loosens it. Yeah, it starts to fall apart. That's why a short brought broom only lasts you a year or two. Wow. So. And what kind of screen is this? That's hemp. Hemp? Yep. The, the one I'm tying that using right now is a 100 pound tensile string. And that one on top is a 48 pound tensile string. And what is this? Those are them? my broom needles. Okay. And that's, I use that when I'm sewing the, when I make them flat. See how the, the bottom layer? These here? Yeah, see the, where it's... Right here? Yeah, that part. That's where I use the 48 pound for it. Oh, wow. chicken, and they will last that. you, like I said, they'll last a long, long time. And start the fire. Ooh, so mom, and what about the handle? What is it made out of? Um, that one is... That one is dogwood. Uh, Say that again, I'm sorry? The one you had in your hand uh -huh. up there is dogwood. I also have sweet gum, black gum, sassafras, uh, persimmon, and hickory, and elm. Wow. And then those are, uh, then locally, uh, when I'm, uh, I go out and harvest them, um, I throw those over there. My wife would use those to make baskets and stuff. Um, I, um, I use red oak, pecan, uh, I get some hickory around here, and, and then I use um, uh, cedar and um, china berry. And where are you from? We're from Zorn. Where? Zorn. Where's that located? Between Seguin and San Marcos, um, off of 123. Yeah. About halfway between Seguin and uh, San Marcos. I the see. only thing we have of note there is a nine pin bowling alley. Oh. We're, the, we're, we're all a bunch of old Germans in there, and uh, that's the only place left in the world that still does the nine pin bowling. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. And you sell these brooms, right? Yeah, 45 for the uh, the big room, 35 for that small one up by the sign on the right. Okay. Uh, the one on the left is called the Duster. Those are 10. And uh, mm. my, my price on, on my website is 55 and 45 but when i'm doing a demonstration like i am here mm -hmm. uh we knock ten dollars off oh okay now do you like watermelon me yeah. oh yeah okay how do you test your watermelon and see if it's ripe if it's ripe yeah what do you do to test your watermelon? i look at the color you look at the color the bottom part of it where it lays the belly part okay let me show you something that works really really good for testing if you take a broom straw mm -hmm. and okay now if let me tie this off here for a second okay, okay. if this is the watermelon and you lay it balance it across there like that mm -hmm. okay uh, when you let go of it if that if that watermelon is ripe the broom straw will turn It'll turn with the water. Like, it'll turn like this until it's you, lined up with the watermelon. Wow! If it doesn't turn, if it's, uh, it doesn't move, or it moves just a little ways and stops, or it moves a little ways, and, or it's real, real slow to move, it's not, not ripe. Really. But if it's ripe, it's going to turn just like that until it's parallel with the watermelon. Oh, wow! Where'd you learn that one from? Old man told me about it, and I thought he was full of it, but my wife is terrible about choosing watermelons, and once we started using that method to do the watermelons, mm -hmm. it worked every single time. Wow. Old timers used to use um, brim straw to, to find w water. Mm -hmm. uh, they take these real long ones and hold them in their hands, and uh, when they cross water, mm -hmm. it, it cross them down. Same thing with electric line. If you have a buried electric line and you cross it, those, uh, the okay, two well, the two bristles will cross and go down. <laughs> and so, it, um, I think I think it has to do with electromagnetic field. But yeah, because my sure. dad used to do it with copper wire. Uh huh. Or Co uh, clothes hanger wire. That's what it right. was. Right. That's what I used. To, uh,